Hi. In this series of videos, we've been talking about how Raza works. We've discussed the internals as well as the process of conversation-driven development. And all in all, Raza offers a great suite of tools. But it's also a suite of tools that's always improving. Conversational AI is not a solved problem, and there's still many challenges left in the field. And I'll give you an example. Let's do a thought experiment. What I'm going to do is I'll mention an utterance, and then we have to imagine what the associated intent might be. So let's start by just considering yes. A user has just said yes. And you can think about this for a moment. And then you could say, well, yes, that sounds like you might be trying to affirm. As far as a conversational Lego brick goes, yes is a clear example of a user indicating that they want to affirm something. Let's do another one. This time the user says no. And again, I would argue that this is a relatively easy one. No is a clear example of a user indicating that they want to deny something in a conversation. And again, we've got a relatively simple conversational building block here. There may also be other utterances that can be used to deny something, but no is a really clear example belonging to a single intent. Let's now consider an example that's definitely more tricky though. Let's now say that someone just said, good afternoon, and try to think about this one for a while. When a user says, good afternoon, what intent can we actually associate with it? It's kind of tricky because you could argue that good afternoon is a really common way to greet somebody, but this doesn't always hold. When somebody says good afternoon at the beginning of a conversation, then I would argue it's pretty clear that we are indeed greeting. However, it's not uncommon for someone to say good afternoon at the end of a conversation, indicating that they're saying goodbye. And this is a fundamental issue if you think about it. Not only is it the case that we can have a single utterance that can be interpreted as one of two intents, it's also the case that it refers to two intents that have an opposite meaning. To really understand what the user wants, we need to understand the context. An intent on its own simply isn't enough. And that is quite the conundrum. In this series of videos, we've been using intents as a fundamental building block for our conversation. But this simple example demonstrates that it's not enough. Real conversations don't follow intents, so we need to allow for conversational systems that can go beyond them. There really is a lot of conversational technology that relies on this fundamental concept of an intent. It's a really nice mental building block to construct conversations and it can still be a very meaningful starting point, but we should recognize that they are a limited abstraction. Real language isn't dictated by intents. So given that these intents are indeed fairly limited, what shall we do? And this is a topic that we are actively researching here at Raza. But before I can explain some of the techniques that we are currently working on, I should take a step back and maybe expand a bit on our general vision of conversational AI. We like to think that there are five levels of conversational AI. And as we progress through all of these five levels, assistants will become more accommodating of the way humans think and will feel less and less like an API endpoint. At level one, the assistants are very easy to make as a developer, but it does put all of the cognitive load on the end user. The user will need to understand how to ask the right question or how to fill the form in the right way. It's not the greatest experience for the end user, but it's still a whole lot better than doing error prone conversations by hand. And there's still some automation happening here, but we would like to alleviate the end user a little bit. At level two, we can say that there's less pressure on the end user because the idea here is that the assistant can pick up on intents, but these intents will still be just that. It'll be very much like a frequently asked questions page. There's no context that moves the conversation forward, but the user won't need to remember all of the possible inputs. It's definitely a great step forward, but these conversations lack context, 
and tend to fail once a user starts to deviate from the happy path. Another good example of a level two assistant would be a form. As the example here shows, when a user says that they're interested in mortgage rates, we could have an assistant that says, hey, I'm happy to help, but I need to know the loan amount. After that, the assistant would need to know the term and the fixed rate or variable rate setting. We're definitely guiding the user here, but you can imagine that if we had an assistant that's only using intents, the moment that the user starts asking questions that don't follow the happy path, things might start going awry. And it's things like this that assistants at level three start to be able to handle. At level three, we start to accommodate that users don't think about the problems in the same way that developers do, and that not every message can be neatly classified into an intent. Getting this right really is tough, but advancing through level three and up is the reason that Raza exists. And let's consider the example that's now shown here. In this case, we've got a user looking for a restaurant, and then the assistant asks if they're interested in Chinese food. The user then replies by saying, well, I had that yesterday. This is another example of an utterance that doesn't really fit an intent. In this case, I had that yesterday should map to the intent to deny. But it only makes sense in the context of this conversation. And that's what we mean with level three and context. It's getting this right. At level four, we envision that insistence will be able to consult. One piece of the puzzle here is automatically figuring out which conversations were successful and which ones broke. When assistants gain the ability to judge conversations as being successful or not, they can also turn the successful conversations into training data and then automatically point the developer to broken conversations, the ones that need guidance before they become training data. At level five, we envision assistants to be adaptive. To add a new capability to the assistant, the designer would provide business logic on how to complete a task, and only a few practice conversations should be enough for the assistant to learn this new task. The assistant will also be able to switch between tasks while carrying over context. In this situation, we definitely still think there has to be a human in the loop, but the idea is that it should be a much easier path to add new functionality to an assistant quickly. At Raza, we like to think that at the moment right now, we have the technology to create level three kinds of assistants. But if we're properly going to advance beyond level three, we really need to stop relying on intents. When we stop relying on intents, we'll be able to handle more conversational situations. So let's discuss some recent research in this area. Let's say that we're interested in being robust against the kinds of conversations that you see on the screen now. We're again looking at a restaurant selection situation. And when asking about a cuisine, a user can reply by saying, well, I had that yesterday, or maybe something like I can always go for sushi. In these conversations, the user is able to make an utterance that doesn't directly belong to an intent. So how might we adapt Raza such that we're able to understand what the user is interested in in these situations. Before Raza 2.1, the way to make a prediction for a next action is to take the text, then predict the intent that's in the text, and to then give that intent prediction to the dialogue manager. In turn, the dialogue manager would use that knowledge to predict the next action. As of Raza 2.2, you are now also able to use the text features as input for the dialogue manager directly. All the featureization steps that are happening inside of the NLU pipeline are now also numeric features that we're passing to the dialogue manager. This way, the dialogue manager is able not just to use intent predictions, but also features that are specific to the current utterance. It deserves to be said that this feature is relatively new, but if you're interested in trying it out, the only thing you gotta do is update your stories.yaml file. You see two examples of stories here. And the thing that's different is that instead of just having intent action pairs, we now also have user utterances. You can type text here, 
which will be featureized and also passed to the dialog manager. The ability to respond and to learn from user text instead of just intents is called end-to-end -end learning. And it's a recent change that we've made to the Raza code base. And it's a change that will allow us to rely less on intents. It's a relatively new feature, and therefore it's also relatively experimental, but it's a really nice example that demonstrates that the Raza code base is always improving. To go beyond level three assistance though, we will need to acknowledge that we need more than just algorithms. You see, the world is a moving target. We still very much need to keep listening to our end users and they live in an ever-changing world. When the new iPhone comes out, I'm sure that any virtual assistants for electronic stores will get a flood of messages that were different to a year before. The world changes and sometimes it really changes fast. So how can we build tools that allow for fast changing assistance? We may need many incremental improvements to build the required infrastructure, but we also need to enable every developer out there to push what's possible with conversational AI. We don't know exactly what improvements we'll see in the next couple of years, but we do have a strategy. The first part of our strategy is open source. Open source code makes the field progress much faster than keeping it behind bars. Building level three assistance is hard, and it's not like we at Raza have all the answers. Developers regularly hack things together into our open source framework for their own purposes, and it's during this hacking that great discoveries get made. Because it's open source, anyone can extend our infrastructure and put their new ideas to work. And as an example, there's a small community of developers in China making Raza components that work really well for Chinese. Another benefit of the open source ecosystem is that Raza can just plug into existing tools as well. Raza natively supports Spacey and Hugging Face, and any improvements made to these two libraries will also cause an improvement to the Raza ecosystem. The second part of our strategy is that we heavily invest in research. We have a large research team, and their work always ends up in the Raza codebase. Raza contributes in two ways though. We do our own research on approaches that we believe will get us to the next level, but we also look for the most meaningful breakthroughs and find a way to make our community benefit from those. Many of the first versions of these research projects are also built in public, so anyone in the community can collaborate and give us feedback on them as well. And this brings us to the third part of our strategy, our community. As a company, we're not going to come up with every idea that moves the technology forward. We invest in a friendly global community of developers that exchange ideas. We're actively investing in our community education, but we also host a forum that is actively being maintained by everyone in the Raza company. It's also a place where many non-English techniques and tools are discussed. Machine learning is no longer a niche field and is becoming a part of standard software engineering. So we need to make sure that our technology stack is understandable for all developers out there. So feel free to explore these resources and let us know on our forum if you have any questions because Raza will always be improving. There will be new techniques and we really wanna make sure that this field moves forward. I hope you enjoyed watching this series of videos and I hope to maybe see you on our forum as well. Thank <music> you.